Musicians, players, producers, and friends. Matt Vanacora with my friends at Gig Performer here once again. And today we're going to talk about how to switch between rack spaces and variations using various MIDI commands. There's two ways to go about it, and it's really great that Gig Performer offers you the flexibility to work in either of these two paradigms because one is a little bit better if you're more of a hands on the keyboard and you just want to hit buttons and switch kind of person, and the other is if you're more of a visual person and you like to see buttons and controls on the screen that can take you from one place to the other. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to check out these videos as they come out hot off the presses. All right, so let's jump into it. So I've got a couple of different sounds and a couple of different rack spaces and variations set up here. I've got a Moog, like, like a little Moog replica, where uh, I've got a chill version and an edgy variation. And then with a the Rhodes, I've got this tremolo sound, and then I've got a bit of a phaser sound. Very nice. Now, I, of course, I want to be able to jump between them all. I want to be able to, if I'm on the roads, maybe stay within the roads and just go from phaser to tremolo. Or if I'm on the Moog and say, all right, it's the next part of the song, I jump ahead, get out of the Moog completely and go over to the road. So one of the ways you can accomplish this is by setting up the global MIDI options in the options menu. So if I go to options and I choose global MIDI. It's gonna bring up that options menu and I've got some global MIDI settings that I can do here. So right here you see already next variation and previous variation as well as song part. They're not assigned yet. So I can just hit learn MIDI and then I can hit the button on my MIDI controller that I want to control that. All right, so I'll hit learn MIDI and now I'll hit the button I wanna be next variation. All right, it learned it. And I'll do the same for previous variation. And while I'm there, why not assign the rack spaces too, in case I want to jump to a completely different sound. So I'll do previous rack space or song, and then next rack space or song. So those are all assigned. A good habit now is just turn off the MIDI learn, and I'll close up shop. So now I'm on the panel. If I hit the rack spaces button, you'll see it jumps from the roads to the Moog. But if I use the variation switching button, it's moving within the Moog to the various variations. And of course, when I get to the end of the variations, it'll go to the next one. But that will let me sit and kind of adjust the different variations of the same sound, or it'll let me just jump from one sound to the next. So that's a great way to map it, and I'm not gonna see it on the screen. Uh, I'm just mapping it to my keyboard. So like for my keyboard, you know, I, the keyboard that I use most of the time to control and play live, I've got that stuff labeled. I got a little like colored tape for like, next sound, next variation, that thing. And once I've mapped it, it's great. I can just look down and hit it and I don't have to worry about it. There are times though, where you're going to want to be able to get a different sound or different variation and you want to have a button on the screen. You know, sometimes we're visual people sometimes, and I, I am too. And you also want to be able to set this up for someone who might want to control it with a mouse or keyboard or someone who's new at this and is not good at mapping MIDI. Um, and you want to be able to, or maybe just you want to back up and you want to be able to switch and see the button on the screen, a tangible widget that you can switch to. So the first thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to enable system actions, all right? So if I go to the wiring side of things, of the patches, or right, I'll go to the top rack space here, I'll right click and I'm going to throw in under miscellaneous plugins, system actions. That's going to give me access to lots of different system-based stuff in this patch. I'm going to do the same for my second one. So now when I'm mapping things, I can actually control system-wide actions like playing, recording, stopping, and of course, next variation, next rack space, and all that stuff. So now if I go to the Moog, I want to, let's say, make a button that's going to let me jump to the next rack space. So I'll go to edit. All right, let's throw a button in. Let's just, let's just use a drum pad. I'll use a nice little red button, okay? I'm not going to do all four. I'll just do one really quick. So I've got that button, and now what I can do is I can assign that widget to one of the system action plugin parameters. So I go to the plugin, I go to the widget mapping, and then I'll pick the plugin system actions right there. And you'll see, look at that, next rack space, previous rack space. So I'll just click next rack space, and now that is assigned to the next rack space. So if I go to the panel and I click it, it takes me to the next rack space. So now I've got a button that will take me there, which is really cool. And of course, you can have the best of both worlds, right? You can globally assign and do that. Or even if you don't want to globally assign at all, you like buttons, you're a button person, you can click on that and you can also assign that to MIDI. So you can go ahead and learn it, learn a button, and now it's assigned to MIDI. My MIDI is pushing that button 
and then that button widget is taking me to the system actions plugin and the parameter is telling it next rack space. So you've got two ways you can do it and both are equally valid. You know, I assign the stuff to MIDI all the time, but I'll, I'll let you in on a little secret. I'm also a real big safety guy. I like to know that everything's going to work all the time and I got a backup plan if it doesn't. So putting the buttons on there that say next patch, patch and previous patch doesn't hurt. So I like to do that as well. There you go. Two ways to approach a really simple topic and a really useful thing to be able to do inside a gig performer.